Johnson. Absent for roll call. Melton. Here. Rowe. Fagley. Here. Mr. President. Here. Please rise for the pledge and remarks by Councilmember Bigley. Everyone, please be seated. Next week in my district, we're very honored to hold the 100th annual Santa Lucia Festival with our sister city, Carnantini. There'll be people in attendance, so I hope everybody can make it down. I think the mayor might be there. It should be a real fun, festive act, um, event for people in the city to enjoy a, a spectacular event for the 100th anniversary of Santa Lucia. Thanks, Mr. President. Thank you. Madam Clerk. Do you want to do the proclamation? Before we start our regular meeting, we'll first have a presentation uh, on behalf of the city of Ralston by Councilmember Hook. Mayor, thank you for being here today. It's good to see you. Um, normally, we would read the full proclamation. Um, I'm going to forego that today. But uh, Tom, would you come up, please? For over 60 years, when you say 4th of July in Omaha, you think of one thing and one thing only, and that's the Ralston Parade. It's been a huge part of the community. It brings all the communities together, not only Omaha, not only Ralston, but Bellevue, La Vista, Papillion. And it, it, it's just been a wonderful time for us to come together to celebrate this great country of ours. So I want to take an opportunity thank the city of Ralston for their commitment, their effort. I, I know it's a lot of work and effort. I can't imagine. You, I know you guys do it 365 days a year is parade, ta parade time for you guys. So I want to thank you on behalf of the city of Omaha and uh, anything we can do to help you in the future, please let us know. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mayor. Tom's retiring <laughs> in a week. <laughs> Sorry, Tom. It's okay. <laughs> Take care. That's quite all right. Floor is yours. If you have any remarks you'd like to share, I, I do. Yes, on behalf of um, Mayor Don Grosser and our City Administrator Rick Hoppy, I just want to thank you very much for this recognition. Uh, in Ralston, we uh, are very proud of our Independence Day celebrations, and it's an opportunity for us to have thousands of people come to Ralston that wouldn't normally come. And so we do appreciate this recognition. We've just celebrated our 64th annual parade, and uh, I see no reason why it won't continue into the future. So we uh, appreciate the support from the city of Omaha, and we uh, look for some successful partnerships in the future. And again, thank you very much. Great, thank you. Thanks for being here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Madam Clerk. Item six, Mayor Stothert will present the 2025 recommended budget. I'll note that the budget and capital improvement plan public hearing will be held on August 13th at 6.30 p.m. in these chambers, but first we'll have the presentation from the mayor. Mayor, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, Council President Festerson, City Council members. Let's try that again. Good afternoon, Council President Festerson, City Council members, and citizens of Omaha. I'm very pleased to be with you today to present our recommended 2025 general fund budget and capital improvement plan. Managing the taxpayers' money is a great responsibility that I take very seriously. The general fund budget pays for our important obligations to our taxpayers and also to our employees. Police and fire protection and emergency services, trash collection, libraries, swimming pools and community centers, parks, Summer camps are all examples of services that citizens expect. As we present our recommendations, we do so as the Nebraska legislature is about to begin a special session. It could result in significant changes to the way we fund critical services, some required by state law. The tax reform package that we are aware of today would put a hard cap on property tax revenue that we believe would have severe unintended consequences. Two thirds of our general fund budget 
pays for police and fire services. We must ensure these services are not compromised. No one wants to wait longer for the fire department if your house is on fire or for a police officer when you are a victim of crime. Our citizens want their streets plowed in the winter and their parks mowed in the summer. They want their trash picked up on time and their libraries, pools, and community centers open. Governor Pillen's Nebraska Plan Playbook says expensive, excessive, excuse me, excessive spending by local governments is the root cause of the state's property tax problem rather than valuation, and I do disagree with the governor. The valuation system is the problem, and the city of Omaha does not overspend, and our annual budgets prove that. Taxpayers should expect reasonable growth in the value of their property over time, not sizable, unexpected, and for some, unaffordable increases. The city of Omaha's average valuation growth since 2013, the year I became mayor, is 3.46%, 3.46%. That is definitely not a windfall. Since I have been mayor, we have had years with no valuation growth, some years negative growth. I have carefully now managed 11 city budgets. We end each year with a surplus. We have not implemented the levy increase approved by the voters in May of 2020, and we will have reduced our property tax levy nearly 12%. We spend what is needed to manage the 39th largest city in the country. We do not overspend. In those years, we don't hire police officers and firefighters or buy equipment to plow snow or repair potholes. We delay improvements to parks and city facilities, and we postpone filling open positions. This is responsible financial management, which is acknowledged every single year by our bond rater companies when they assign the city of Omaha high bond rating. I certainly support property tax reform and reducing taxes for the citizens of Omaha. I have lowered our levy four times for more than 8%, and I am proposing another in 2025. The Greater Omaha Chamber's Urban Core Strategic Plan, a long-range vision for the city, is built around one forward-thinking statement, and that is cities never stand still. They are either growing and moving forward or they are declining and falling behind. That is why I am so concerned about the lack of discussion with local governments as the state senators begin to consider potentially damaging plans and the unintended consequences. Omaha has great momentum right now and we are moving forward and we cannot and will not fall behind. Our future depends on strong financial foundation we now have in place. My budget priorities are always based on my goals. Number one, public safety. Then managing our city budget, keeping taxes low, to create economic development and job growth, and to improve the taxpayer's experience. These then are the highlights of our 2025 budget. We recommend a total general fund budget of $531 million, which is a 4.8% increase from 2024. We estimate that property tax revenue in 2025 will be approximately $233 million, up slightly over 2% 2 from 2024. Sales tax revenue is projected at $250 million, which is up 7.5% over the 2024 sales tax receipts. And the restaurant tax is estimated at $47 million, up 5% from this year, 2024. The estimates in sales and restaurant tax can be attributed to inflation. I am proposing the fifth and the largest property tax decrease in 2025, 3.3%. During my term, I will have reduced the levy almost 12%. Our levy is already at its lowest rate since 2010. Even with this additional reduction, we are able to fund important expenses in our 2025 budget. We are committed to police officer recruitment and retention so Omaha remains a safe city. We will expand our recruitment strategies to attract new candidates to prepare for the 2025 recruit classes. 
even with new higher salaries for all officers including recruits we remain well below the nine hundred six officers that we are budgeted for we are currently at seven hundred and eighty despite the police cha uh, staffing challenges the first half of this year crime in omaha is down thirteen percent from last year and violent crime is down thirty percent those are numbers we could be very very proud of chief schmatter and his command staff are doing an excellent job managing with the number of police officers down as much as they are the fire department will continue to implement the apparatus replacement plan in 2025 we have budgeted three and a half million dollars to replace apparatus this plan is now in its third year and it ensures that our firefighters have up-to-date, safe, and reliable apparatus to provide the best fire and emergency medical response possible. The fire department also plans a 2025 recruit uh, class. We will again increase road repair and maintenance budget, bringing the major street resurfacing budget to $10 million in 2025, an equal amount is set aside for residential streets. The new Central Library will open in 2026. The budget includes our phased-in approach to add staff and technology to this one-of-a-kind library. Every budget, I have prioritized increasing our savings accounts. The cash reserve and contingent liability funds have balances of $35 million each now. This compares to less than $8 million combined in these accounts when I first became mayor. Saving for emergencies is just smart financial budgeting. We will continue to increase our savings accounts. Our 2025 budget also includes our contractual agreements with our sworn and civilian employees, including wages and benefits. And today, we have contracts with every one of our bargaining units. Healthcare insurance costs for employees and retirees will increase approximately 7% next year. The fire union's health care trust continues to be the most expensive plan that the city funds. We would save taxpayer money if firefighters would agree to be covered under the city's health care plan. Every year we set aside a small percentage of the budget to help community organizations that offer valuable services such as job training, youth mentoring, domestic violence prevention, and services for people who are unsheltered. This year, we will restore an additional funding to PACE, Police Athletics for Community Engagement. With a new board of directors now and management of the Omaha Sports Commission, PACE has definitely rebounded from the financial mismanagement. I am recommending $100,000 in community service funds to PACE to continue the youth athletic and mentoring programs. Along with our 2025 general fund budget, I'm also presenting the capital improvement plan today. The CIP outlines our long-term investments in transportation, public safety, public facilities, parks, and environment. Our 2025 to 2030 capital improvement plan continues the great momentum of our city heading into the next decade. This plan includes major street improvements and bridge repair and replacement projects in every single city council district and the continuation of our successful street preservation program since the voters approved this ambitious plan for our streets in may of 2020 we have accelerated asphalt concrete and brick street repair we have already completed approximately 500 lane miles of street improvements Training for our first responders and updated technology and equipment is critical to public safety. The CIP includes moving the Omaha Police Outdoor Gun Training Range from its current location in Elkhorn. We need a new location where nearby homes and businesses are not impacted by the loud and frequent noise from the gun range. An important redevelopment of our urban core requires additional, additional emphasis on public safety. So we will add a new police precinct, our sixth precinct in the downtown area. Now, I wanna say this is not our new public, to sa public safety headquarters that we are, have been talking about. It is still in the planning stage. 
This also building downtown with the new police precinct will include a fire station in the same building so we can still continue to dispatch from downtown. As Omaha becomes increasingly popular destination for conventions, meetings, and major sports events, Visit Omaha, our Convention and Visitors Bureau, estimates continued growth in this sector. Our CIP includes the city's contribution to the expansion and renovation of the CHI Health Center, Arena, and Convention Center. We will be able to attract more and larger events, which results in increased visitor spending. Philanthropic partners will pay for half of this project. Impactful park improvements projects are also in the capital improvement plan, including the Levi Carter Sports Complex and the Youth Multi-Sports Complex and Tournament Facility at Tranquility Park. We will break ground this fall at Levi Carter and next spring at Tranquility Park. A new spray ground is planned in Elkhorn, new trail connections and improvements to Adams Park and the baseball facilities at Boyd and Jerry Parks Field are now in design. The CIP also includes $135 million for 2025 streetcar expenses, including utility relocation costs, vehicles, and professional services. This money that is in the CIP for the streetcar comes from the sale of private placement bonds. We are not spending tax dollars on the streetcar, and it will not raise your taxes. We have also included the new permanent protected downtown bikeway that will replace the current bikeway that's on Harney Street. The total for the proposed six-year CIP is $3.6 billion, which also includes federal aid and contributions from our strong philanthropic partnerships that we are very, very proud to have. Later today, you have a public hearing on proposals for the November ballot for transportation, public safety, public facilities, parks, and environmental or sewer bonds. These bonds will not increase property taxes. They will, however, provide continued funding for Omaha's future growth and success. As the legislature opens its special session, supposed to be this Thursday, we will be advocating for the citizens of Omaha to benefit from tax reforms that the senators and the governor may agree on without losing our momentum or the ability to pay for services that we must provide for the citizens of Omaha. While no one can expect what the outcome is, we do not expect what is happening in Lincoln to impact the budget as soon as 2025. So thank you, council members, for your input on this budget. We've worked together on this. And thank you to the city staff, department directors, our finance team, especially Steve Curtis, Andrew Brott, and Nicole Sweeney. The recommended budget and the capital improvement plan are now available on the city's home website. They're up right as we speak. The public hearing will be held for this budget in this chamber on August 13th at 6.30 p.m. And I do encourage citizens to attend and provide us feedback. Thank you all. We'll just take one second to get the uh, diocese reorganized here before we proceed with the rest of the meeting.
Okay, Madam Clerk, please continue. Item seven, to consider a Class C liquor license for the Dandelion, located at 15475 Ruggles Street, Suite 108. Public hearing and vote on number seven is today. Proponents, please. Anyone here on number seven? <laughs> Seeing none, any opponents to number seven? I may not close the public hearing as we typically require an applicant to be here. Do, do we have time on this license? Uh, yes, it's due to the state on August 12th. Council members, do you want to delay for one week? Motion a second to delay for one week. Roll call. Hug. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Melton. Yes. Rowe. Yes. Bagley. Aye. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed six to zero. Item eight to consider a Class C liquor license for La Traga Zona located at 1620-1622 Harney Street, A's communication in opposition. Public hearing and vote on number eight is today. Proponents, please. Good afternoon, Mr. President, members of the council. David Houghton on behalf of the applicant La Traga Zona LLC, which is located at 1620 through 1622 Harney Street. Um, La Traga Zona is an existing restaurant that would add, like to add a Class C liquor license um, and serve alcohol as an amenity, but it is a restaurant first. Um, the hours of operation will be until midnight, and uh, as I said, it's located at 1620 Harney Street, so it is in the Central Business District. If the members of the council have any questions, I'd be happy to address them. Okay. Thank you. Any other proponents today? Seeing none, any opponents? Uh, Donny R. Johnson, the Johnson Equestrian Foundation, and North Omaha Concerned Citizen Foundation. We was under the impression that uh, the fire department was going to be leaving, so we are opposing this because the United Nations is going to buy that First National Bank building that's downtown. All right, Donnie, this is about a liquor license at 16th and Harney. Yeah, but if we buy it and put the United Nations down at that because we can't get the fire station, we don't want alcohol around the United Nations or consulates that we're going to put downtown at the First National Bank building. Because if you have two First National Bank, the new ba First National Bank. This is not about First National Bank. Yeah, but at 16th and 20th, we're going to buy that whole plaza if we can't get the other two buildings. Okay. And he's going to put a liquor store there. We might have a problem with that. Okay, thank you. Any other opponents today? Seeing none, public hearings closed. Um, council members, any questions? I have one that was just brought to my attention. If, if the applicant could, could uh, um, just come back up for one second. I think you said the business plan says close at midnight, but I think the business plan and the paperwork says close at 9. Would that, would that be? That could very well be. Uh, Mr. Festerson, the truth is I don't have the application on me. We had meetings in Lincoln this morning, so okay. I got that information vis a a partner over the telephone on the way in the door. Okay. But I'll take your word for it. The, whatever's <laughs> in the paperwork is what is... What's in the paperwork is, the, I, what, is yes. what I would okay. represent to the council. Thank you. And thank, so thank you to the clerk for bringing that to my attention. <laughs> is there a motion? Approval? Right. Motion a second to approve. Roll call. Hug. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Melton, yes. Rowe, yes. Bagley, Aye. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed six to zero. Thank you. Okay. Item nine to consider a liquor license addition application for Red Lion Lounge located at 3802 Farnham Street to add an indoor area. A public hearing and vote on number nine is today. Proponents, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. David Houghton, 8204 South 87th Ave. Here on behalf of the applicant Red Lion Lounge LLC. This is uh, an addition application to add a 27 by 27 area that will be used um, for some additional seating space and sometimes as a party room. Uh, if the council has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you. Any other proponents today? Seeing none, any opponents? Public hearings closed. Motion is second to approve. Roll call. Hug. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Melton. Yes. Rowe. Yes. Bagley. Aye. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed six to zero. Thanks. Items 10 through 13 can be considered together for Elk Valley Commercial, located southeast of 204th Street and West Dodge Road. Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approval. B is communication and opposition. 
Item 10, an ordinance to rezone this property to CC District. Item 11, an ordinance to amend the boundaries of the MCC overlay district to incorporate this property into that district. Item 12, a resolution to approve the final plat. Item 13, a resolution to approve the subdivision agreement. Public hearing and votes on items 10, 11, 12, and 13 are today. Proponents, please. Uh, Andrew Reck with Foley Schultz Engineering, uh, 14503 Grover Street, uh, representing the applicant. Um, the final plat uh, complies very closely with the preliminary plat that was before you uh, a while back, but uh, just here to answer any questions that might come up. Thank you. Any other proponents? Seeing none, any opponents? Public hearings closed. There's a motion to approve in a second. Roll call. Hug. Johnson. Yes. Melton. Yes. Rowe. Yes. Bagley. Aye. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed six to zero. Items 14 through 16 can be considered together for Blue Sage Creek 3, located northeast of 222nd and F Streets. Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approval. <coughs> Item 14, an ordinance to rezone this property from AG District to R4 District. Item 15, a resolution to approve the final plat. Item 16, a resolution to approve the subdivision agreement. Public hearing and votes on items 14, 15, and 16 are today. Proponents, please. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Members of the Council, Larry Jovan, 100 and 1440 West End Road, appearing on behalf of the developer and the development uh, here with uh, Caleb Schneider of Lamper and the Consulting Engineers on this particular project. It's a 172 single family lot subdivision at 222nd and F Street, and this is the third and final phase of Blue Sage Creek, so we're here to answer any questions. Thank you. Any other proponents? <laughs> Seeing none, any opponents? <coughs> Donnie R. Johnson, the Johnson Equestrian Foundation, and North Omaha, North Omaha Concerned Citizen Foundation, 4928 North 52nd Street. And Mr. Larry and his developers heavy equipment is tearing up our streets and we want you to set aside some money to make sure that they bring this heavy equipment because we're going to bring some heavy equipment after we try to purchase that building the first national on the where the old hilton is at so, so you're going to charge us a, a fee for that 222nd f you yeah i've been telling you to larry topic. yeah larry i told him several times that equipment we've been following it and you're tearing up our streets and you're going to have to pay for it larry the developer that's not this development All that's right. not his are there any other opponents okay. today? Seeing none, public hearings closed. Motion, Motion to approve in a second. Roll call. Hug. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Melton. Yes. Rowe. Yes. Bagley. Aye. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed six to zero. Consent agenda. Any member of the city council may cause any item placed on the consent agenda to be removed. Items removed from the consent agenda shall be taken up by the city council immediately following the consent agenda and the order in which they were removed unless otherwise provided by the city council rules of order. The public hearings on agenda items 17 through 24 were held on July 16th. I don't see any further lights. Is there a motion? Motion in a second. Roll call. Hug. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Melton. Yes. Rowe. Yes. Bagley. Aye. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed six to zero. The public hearings on agenda items 25 through 29 are today. If you wish to address the city council regarding these items, please come to the microphone Indicate the agenda item number you wish to address. Identify yourself by name and address and who you represent. And if you are a proponent or an opponent, items 25 through 29. Good afternoon, Council President, members of the City Council. Caitlin DeHelius, Director of the Human Rights and Relations Department, here to answer any questions and as a uh, proponent for item number 28, which is an amendment to our Title VI plan. Thank you. Any other testifiers on these items? Seeing none, public hearings are closed. Thank you, Colonel. Motion and a second to approve. Roll call. Hug. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Melton. Yes. Rowe. Yes. Bagley. Aye. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed six to zero. Item 30, an ordinance to amend section one and section three of ordinance number 43802 for a vacation of a portion of the Douglas Street right of way. Public hearing on number 30 is today. Proponents, please. See none, any opponents? 
public hearings closed item thirty one in ordinance to acquire private property for the purpose of constructing the city wide lift station replacement number three project public hearing on number thirty one is today proponents please I'm Abe Lincoln, and uh, I live at 5501 North Third Street, where they want to put the Rock Road back to the OPPD. Uh, I talked to a Vernon Johnson uh, in March, and that's the last time I talked to her about this. And uh, I just heard about this this morning. Somebody called me and told me what's going on. Uh, I don't quite understand what's going on with this uh, easement. It's been an easement since 1974 and now they want to put a rock road through there. I just don't understand that. Uh, <clears throat> they got OPPD back there. They can come right through their gate. It's all concrete and it goes right to where they got to work. Now they're going to make this easement road through my land and uh, they got to tear down two fences back there to get to it. It's OPPD's big fence and then they got another fence behind that fence they have to tear down. And uh, I just don't understand what's really going on. Uh, this Vernon Johnson come out to the house and was talking real nice to me and stuff. And and uh, she said, well, what do you think about it? And I said, well, I don't think I'd have a problem with it, but we need to put up a gate. And she said, they're not gonna put up no gate. And I said, well, then we got a problem because there's so many kids down there with four wheelers and dune buggies. They shoot down that side road, there's a gravel road, they're gonna shoot right straight through there. And then they're gonna find out it's a dead end and they're gonna spin cookies out in my, my yard that I just paid a thousand bucks in to have grass and stuff in there, and they're gonna get back out of there, you know? But she, she said that they didn't think they'd put up a gate, and uh, I need to have somebody talk to me about this, because you know now there's a meeting and stuff on it, and I ain't heard nothing. Okay, and then just for the record, do you consider yourself a proponent or an opponent today? What's that, sir? Do you consider yourself a proponent or an opponent today? You know. Uh, I'm for whatever's the best, but I just don't understand it's been an easement for 50 years now, and they've never had to have a rock road through there, you know? And uh, I just inherited, I not inherited, but I bought the land next to me where I lived, and uh, you know, I leveled it all out, took care of it because it was farmed, and it left it in weeds. So I eliminated all that, and I planted grass. I got it looking real nice now, you know? Okay. And I got it all in one yard now and stuff, and. Uh, I know they're gonna take my house, you know, in that Blair Airfield deal, you know, but I like to keep it <laughs> nice as long as I can, you know. Okay, we'll have some questions for you here in a minute. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, next, I'll take any other proponents that might wanna speak. If none, we'll go to opponents. We'll close the public hearing. Ms. Johnson, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I have a few questions. Um, Mr. Um, Lincoln, if you would come back up to the podium, please. Um, thank you. I understand that you have some concerns about what the what the details of this project is. Is that correct? Yes, sir. All right, um, Mr. Stubbe, is there a way you can provide a summary of what's going on here? Bob Stubbe, Public Works. So yeah, this again is um, a necessity ordinance to uh, for council to give us the ability to communicate with the property owner. Obviously, uh, somebody from the right-of-way division has already communicated with the property owner. I understand they have questions. Uh, Mr. Tyler in the back uh, would be a, a person that this gentleman could talk to. And, and uh, Jim, if you would stand up, that would be the gentleman for you to communicate with and so we can answer your question directly. Yeah, because this she got a hold of me in March, and that's yeah. the last time I heard from her. Yeah, she's in a right-of-way division, and so obviously that's part of her responsibility, and what we're uh, doing today is getting approval to negotiate with property owners that might be affected by uh, the improvements at this particular location. Okay, thank you, sir. You're welcome. Okay, thank you. You understand? All right, thank you, ma'am. All right, thanks. Thank you. There's no further lights. Thank you for that interaction. Next item. Item 32, an ordinance to acquire private property for the construction of the Pershing Pump Station and Force Main Replacement Project. Public hearing on item number 32 is today. Proponents, please. Seeing none, any opponents? 
Public hearings closed. Item 33, an ordinance to designate fire station number five, located at 4702 South 25th Street as a historic landmark. Planning board and planning department recommend approval. Public hearing on number 33 is today. Proponents, please. Eric England, City of Omaha Planning Department, just here asking for your approval. Um, this is the former South Omaha Fire Station. The city, uh, while in possession of this, we believe it should be designated as a local landmark. It has historic um, importance and it actually comes from the, the city's first comprehensive plan back in the late 1940s. So as we, as the mayor earlier just presented the, the new and, and uh, latest version of the CIP, this does have historical significance as it dates back, excuse me, as it dates back to the late 1940s, as I said. Um, asking for your approval. The city has issued an RFP to sell this and you'll be seeing further items on this in the future. Okay. Any other proponents at this point? <clears throat> Good afternoon, uh, Jason Bradley, Assistant Fire Chief, 1516 Jackson. Uh, here to answer any questions, we are in support of the, the resolution as well. Um, it's a historical building. Um, yeah adds a lot of character to that corner always has so if you have any questions be here to answer them thank you any other proponents yes shelly mccafferty i'm the preservation administrator 510 um, north 43rd street yeah the uh, landmarks heritage preservation commission in january deemed that this met all the criteria to be a local landmark it is significant into two different areas um, the first being under planning and community development. This is for its role in firefighting in both downtown South Omaha as well as with the packing plants. Secondly, it's significant because it's a rare example in Omaha of a streamlined modern building. It's built of all concrete, um, has streamlined modern graphics and other accents associated with it. Uh, so the Landmarks Heritage Preservation Commission did find that it met all, all criteria. Thank you. Thank you. Any other proponents that want to speak? Seeing none, any opponents? It's got to be the, to the landmark preservation designation, uh, yes, right, Mr. Ferguson? Okay. I keep telling you, in college when we did all this stuff, uh, not Dan Welch, not that guy. Anyway, uh, Donnie R. Johnson, the Johnson in Question Foundation, and North Omaha Concerned Citizen Foundation. I have had a disagreement with the fire department ever since 1972. If, unless they can put Navy as the greatest fighters in the whole, uh, firefighters in the world, I suggest they don't put that. I told the Omaha Fire Department. All right, you, Donnie, this yes, is sir. the preservation designation. All right. Any other opponents to number 33? Public hearings closed. Item 30. Eric, I, I might have a question oh. for you, Eric. Um, I, always, I support this designation, but I, you mentioned an RFP for Fire Station 5 for its future. Um, has that been awarded yet? Yes. So yes. earlier this year, the city had issued an RFP. We received uh, three responses. And in coordination with the mayor's office, planning department staff, and the mayor's office staff, we graded those proposals and selected a winner. Those uh, documents for the actual purchase agreement are currently being reviewed by the law department and will be coming to this body um, for that sale of that property in the near future. Okay. That's my understanding too, and that that likely new owner um, is on board with the preservation designation. Doesn't change anything they intend to do, right? Yes, that is correct. We had provided, um, we had undertaken a feasibility study, and I can uh, we can have Shelley come up and speak to any of the specifics on this if if you wish. But prior to uh, the issuance of the RFP, we had. Um, brought on a consultant to provide, you know, an analysis of the building, making sure, you know, it was fit to be, you know, to keep and to be saved. There's, there's been issues with this, this building, with the, the roof, and, um, you know, it's been, it, th there's been some challenges over the, over recent years. And so we brought on this consultant to, to do this feasibility study. This was provided to all of, um, with the issuance of the RFP. So everyone who, had interest or looked into that, had this information available. It's about 30 pages. It's, um, you know, it's in your packet. It's a, a great wealth of information. So this site is not within a community redevelopment area. So um, the city undertook a, a licensed appraisal for the property. And so 
um, the award bid would be required to pay that appraised price. Okay. And are you in a place where you can uh, talk about who that is at this juncture, or are you still in review of those details? Um, I guess, I, I think, I don't want to say, I don't know what's been made public, so um, I guess in the coming weeks, okay. you know, we could, we'll be able to announce that. Okay. So. Thank you. Yep. I don't see any further lights. Next item. Item 34, an ordinance to approve the Connect Omaha Active Mobility Plan, Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approval of these communication and support. Public hearing on number 34 is today. Proponents, please. We'll first have a presentation by the Planning Department. Good afternoon, uh, Derek Miller, uh, City Planning staff. Um, so real quick, I also have Matt Sillinger with uh, JEO Consulting Group that um, the con the, was a consultant that worked on the plan. but. Um, we started this plan process in uh, the fall of 22 and just wrapped it up earlier this spring. So uh, this plan itself has been uh, a needed component of our current comprehensive plan. So we have um, short, medium, and long-term priorities to implement this plan. So like I said, it's something we've needed for quite some time. Uh, through the development of the, the planned uh, document, and um, was our technical advisory committee. It was uh, planning department, public works, parks, the mayor's office, and MAPA. Um, also, we had a community stakeholder committee. I'm not gonna read all those names, but also uh, they helped throughout the process of developing the plan, provided input, provided guidance, and, um, and got us to where we are today. And one major aspect of this planning process was a uh, data-driven process. So it was heavily, uh, we heavily relied on data to get us to the the output of this plan and, and where we should go in the future. So that's, just don't wanna understate that, that this uh, plan process was heavily reliant upon data. So with that, I'll turn it over to Mr. Selinger. Uh, greetings, Mr. President and City Council. Matt Selinger, 11213 uh, Davenport Street with uh, JEO. And uh, just talk a little bit more about the project, there's only 33 slides left. Just kidding. <laughs> so the chapters of the Act Mobility Plan, there are five chapters. This is online and available uh, as a draft, final, kind of final draft form. Um, there's the five chapters that are listed. And uh, there's a lot of community engagement on the project. There were eight events, 329 city residents who provided comments in a direct format and, and form uh, interacting with us. There was uh, six months of community partnership that was happening all during the process. So uh, it was uh, very engaging with the public. Also, um, when you think about the active mobility plan, one of the key things with it was also aligning with Vision Zero plan, which is a very important plan that was, that was adopted by you just last year. And so there were seven guiding principles with Vision Zero and the active mobility plan uh, connects with all seven of those. So there's good, good connection there. Um, this map shows the active mobility walking and bicycle. And this, these are the public in, uh, input that was given on what's most important to our public. So this map is comprehensive, it's citywide, and there were um, hundreds of data points given by the public to say what they are interested in. Uh, when you look at the prioritized projects for bicycling, this map provides a summary and it was broken into five different priority sections. They're, again, all over the community, and the prioritization is set up to allow, uh, you know, decisions by city staff in the just normal process of doing business as to when they're, when projects happen, we go ahead and add these, pro add these elements to, say, a road project to add a bikeway along that, that segment. Uh, and then the pedestrian projects, very similar thing. You'll note that there's a lot more kind of dots on the map, which is filling in a lot of gaps. Again, there's five levels of priority that these were broken into for the ease of use of the plan. Uh, the draft plan was published on March 8th and it was available for 30 days for comment from the public. Um, really, there were only 13 comments that were provided online through the format. And the majority of these were positive comments about this is great, we're excited for it, you know, go faster, get it here. Um, and all those comments, they, were, they did have responses that were provided. With that, here to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Other proponents? Seeing none, any opponents? 
public hearing is closed. Derek, I might have a question for you, then we'll see if there's any other lights. I, I definitely support the plan here, and I appreciate that we're to this juncture now of having a proposal and a, of an active mobility plan, and then also suggestions in this document about near-term, mid-term, and long-term implementation of it. Um, my question for you is that is a concern I've expressed before just that we now have a lot of different studies in, in the city, active mobility, vision zero, climate action, uh, affordable housing. We'll need to engage on a, a new poverty reduction plan soon. So, and a master plan uh, re rewrite, all of which I think are positive things. But my question is, uh, it starts to make me worried about implementation. How do we go about mm -hmm. implementing all those things that are important? Um, I think the approach here that was just described is, this is more of an incremental um, implementation, project by project as they occur. And it's not gonna be entirely the city that does this. We'll have a lot of partners. But can you speak to that notion of implementation and will there be any dedicated funding to these things in the future? Will we see any kind of designation in the capital improvement plan that we were just um, introduced? Yeah, um, first off, yeah, there, there have been a lot of plans. And I think a lot of our community is, they're tired of planning. They wanna see action. Yes. And I agree with that. Um, and one thing I didn't say at the top, but We've done a lot of work before this plan even came into being, even before we got the grant. So a lot of work between planning public works and parks has been taking place over the last many years, last couple decades, even before that. Um, so we're, we're going to continue that work. Um, and and I agree with you, The as a planner, the most important piece is implementation, getting the work done, and getting the projects completed. Um, I, I think we'll continue to do what we've been doing, um, especially between planning and, and public works. Um, we've um, made a lot of headway just on simple things like uh, street resurfacing. Uh, we've been able to uh, do, do what's called routine accommodation. So if we have a designated street or a street that's designated for a bike lane, uh, we've worked with public works on the last five years just to go ahead and make that improvement made when that street is resurfaced. Um, I think it's still up in the air as far as if there'll be a dedicated funding source in the CIP. There are many projects in the CIP today that include projects that are listed in here, Harney Street being Harney Farnham uh, being one of them. Um, but I think, yeah, we do have to take an incremental approach. Um, some cities have gone big and spent a lot of money. Um, and um, um, then that's being in a, a fiscally conservative community, that's we need to follow that process of of just being incremental. Um, but down the road, we may have conversations to have a dedicated funding source. I don't know, that's that's over my pay grade at this point. Um, but I think um, I've seen with my time at the city, seen a lot of input or a lot of impact with projects like this, and we'll see more as we have, as we go down, uh, down the road um, per se. So I don't have a really good answer for you at this point, but like I said, we've we've uh, completed quite a few projects. And one one thing that we could do, um, and we we do highlight it in the CIP, we highlight in other areas of what we have accomplished. I think we can start um, focusing on that more to show the community what we have completed. Uh, besides what's in the CIP, we have those completed projects in there today. We can highlight that more just to show that things are being done. If you can't, because. You can't see the city all at once, so you you don't know as a single uh, citizen um, what's being done, what has a, has been accomplished over the years. So okay. I don't know if I answered your question or not. Yeah, and ideally, from your perspective, or maybe is from best practices in your in your review of other cities, um, would it be helpful to have a dedicated funding source to do these things? It would be, um, but at the same time, in the CIP, there there are quite a few projects that are um, meeting the needs of, of of all users, including active transportation. So, um, in a way that that might be a little um, confusing, just because we're doing it today with other, um, say, a vehicular, pedestrian, and by and and cyclists, we're doing it all together. So, um, that might get somewhat complicated. But yeah, any any more money we can get, the better. At the same time, we have to be responsible with what we spend. Okay, thank you. Ms. Johnson, you're recognized. Um, thank you, Mr. President. Um, this is to piggyback on what Mr. Festerson has already stated regarding the number of projects that we have in the community. A lot of discussion, timetables, and things of that nature has been out in the community. Um, Again, um, I would like to see 
some way that we can showcase that or keep a timeline or a schedule of that so that we can continue to keep the people, the public, the residents of Omaha um, engaged and they have some type of expectation of what to see and where those benchmarks are? Mm -hmm. How is there a way, I mean, I know that we have the website, the uh, city website, Public Works, um, is there a way for us to put that type of information there and could I be um, more informative or provide more additional information to the constituents regarding where they can find that information? Yeah, today uh, Public Works has, uh, just speaking to the non-trail aspects of this plan, but uh, Public Works today has uh, Keep Omaha Moving, um, quite a few active mobility I didn't say quite a few. There are active mobility projects on that website. Um, I could talk with Public Works to see if there's a way we can highlight that on an annual basis and get that out there for the public to see and also work with you and provide that information to you on an annual basis. But, but I think an annual basis might not, it, we might need to do it a little bit more frequent than an annual basis. Okay. You know, at the very least, maybe quarterly. Okay, yeah, I could um, talk to Public Works about that. I, Thank you. Yep. Thank you. No further lights. Next item. Item 35, an ordinance to amend section 23-177 of the Omaha Municipal Code concerning employment classifications by adding the associate library specialist personnel board recommends approval. Public hearing on item number 35 is today. Proponents, please. Good afternoon. Deb Sander, Human Resources Director, here to answer any questions. Chelsea Ship, Human Resources Department, also here to answer any questions. Thank you. Any other proponents? Seeing none, any opponents? Public hearings closed. Item 36, an ordinance to approve a contract with Fastest Labs of East Omaha to provide pre-employment drug screening. Public hearing on number 36 is today. Proponents, please. Deb Sander, City Human Resources, here to answer any questions. Hello, Rebecca Nunley, uh, City of Omaha Human Resources, here to answer any questions. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other proponents today? Seeing none, any opponents? Mm -hmm. Public hearings closed. Okay. Item 37, in ordinance to accept the bid and approve a lease agreement with Dillon Brothers Harley-Davidson Inc. for 16 Harley-Davidson motorcycles for the Omaha Police Department. Public hearing on number 37 is today. Proponents, please. Dewan Reddick, 2106 South 37th Street. Um, not here to answer any questions, but to show support for item 37. I think it's a continued commitment by City of Omaha and the City Council to support uh, local vendors and businesses. And it's good to see that this is happening with a business that continues to support our community as well. Okay. Thank you. Any other proponents? Seeing none, any opponents? Number 37. I'm finally on the same page. It's a purchase for the Omaha Police Department. Number Harley Davidson? Yes, sir. Donnie R. Johnson, the Johnson Equestrian Foundation, and North Omaha Concerned Citizen Foundation. As I have uh, spoken to, I like to stay out of the police business and the deputy and sheriff business, but we would like for you to add on to this. The young men in North Omaha want to learn how to fly drones while they learn how to ride motorcycles. See, when I was studying with Steve Jobs in California, we were way ahead of this. So can you, like in my generation, Mayor Leahy had jobs for all those kids. So we'll get jobs for the kids to go to the police station, learn how to do these drones. I can do drones, it's real easy. But in the meantime, what about the African-American kids? So if they would send some money for Harley Davidson, I like flying planes, so that's the way I stay away from the Harleys. Thank you. Any other opponents today, number 37? Seeing none, public hearings closed. Next item. Item 38, an ordinance to approve an agreement with Omaha Public Schools to provide school resource officers for the 2024-2025 school year. Public hearing on number 38 is today. Proponents, please. Seeing none, any opponents? Is this Cody Yes. Yes. <clears throat> 
Larry Store, 5015 Lafayette Avenue, 68132. Uh, I'm not totally opposed, but I would like some discussion on this as to why this is so many associate officers are uh, required. Are we short of people? And are of our young people or more and more of them getting in trouble? The program's not working, that we need to have 10 more associates that are not regular officers. Uh, to do what and under whose direction? If we're paying for it, uh, will they work for the police chief or will they work for the school board? Whose policies will they follow? The city of Omaha or the uh, school board? So who's really in control with my tax dollars? I'd just like a little discussion on why this seems to be necessary. Is it an expansion of an already existing program or a brand new one? Thank you. Thank you. Any other opponents to number 38? Seeing none, public hearings closed. No further lights. Next item. Item 39, an ordinance to accept an authorized disbursement from the Nebraska Commission on Law Enforcement to support the Omaha Police Department Gang Unit Firearms DNA Testing Program. Public hearing on number 39 is today. Proponents, please. Seeing none, any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Item 40, an ordinance to establish a Class B flammable liquids storage district number B-222, located at 8550 Indian Hills Drive. Public hearing on number 40 is today. Proponents, please. See none. Any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Item 41, an ordinance to provide that the City of Omaha be authorized to issue and sell general obligation bonds in an amount not to exceed $80.9 million for transportation-related projects. Public hearing on number 41 is today. Proponents, please. Seeing none, any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Let me have a, just a couple questions on this. This is, this is the first of the proposed series of bonds uh, that we'll have today. Um, I think, Mr. Curtis, this question is for you. This, is, this applies, I think, to all of them, just from an overall perspective. Um, I may have a couple of specific questions to the later ones, but uh, this would be an $80 million, almost $81 million um, proposition to voters, generally for transportation issues. But overall, um, as the mayor indicated in her remarks today, these proposed bonds would not cause any levy increase up and above what was been approved by voters in 2020. Um, these particular bonds, though, would require an increase in the debt levy service to, to fund them and to make sure they're fundable uh, over the long term, even though we're reducing the overall amount of the levy. Is that an accurate statement to say? Steve Curtis, City Finance. We did, during this current budget, propose a small move. <clears throat> I think it was a penny from the general fund to the debt service fund, in addition to cutting a penny and a half out of the general fund. Right. So a portion of the authorized levy in 2025 does increase due to be able to afford these these bonds and, and make sure they do not raise taxes, but the overall levy is reduced by about a, a cent and a half. Uh, that's correct. Okay. And this is generally two years earlier than we would have done otherwise. Can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, remember we go on about a four-year cycle, but in any given time period, there's nothing uh, charter-related or anything else to the four years. We generally aggregate projects, and if we have a bunch that came up that don't have enough authorization, but we have plenty of capacity, uh, we'll do it earlier. So these are intended to be four more years of authorization from where we are right now. Four more years. And what years would those be for, for folks? Uh, mostly 25 through 28. Uh, but we're not obligated to uh, spend or to release them until I believe 2032. Okay. But most projects, uh, outlined in these bond issues would occur between 2025 and 2028. That's correct. And then an overall capacity question for you. We've talked about this a lot over the years, um, and it's something I've followed closely when we talk about retiring bonds and the increased ability to do additional investment in city infrastructure, streets, parks, public facilities, like we're talking about today. 
the approval of these bonds and if they're approved by the voters in November um, do not um, expand our entire capacity in terms of our inde bonded indebtedness, right? There's still the capacity to do additional projects if desired? That's correct. And the bond raters, when they look at our reserves, they expect there to be adequate reserves. So we never spend them down to, uh, down to zero. So no, there is still capacity there. That's one thing um, I'm interested in. Obviously, we need to be responsible financially, and I, th I think what you're proposing here is. Um, but an item I'm also interested in that is part of a plan we talked about earlier today, um, the Affordable Action Housing Plan uh, is an example of something that has some innovative suggestions in it. And one of those policy items that suggests we look into is the possibility of community housing bonds. Um, some studies have done that um, to address affordable housing in their community. I think we all agree that's a huge need in our community. So that's something I'm interested in, in exploring more in the context of that plan. That's not proposed in any of these bond issues, I understand. Um, but I, w I wanted to ensure we do still have capacity in the future to address something like that. And I believe we do. Do you agree with that statement? Uh, we do have capacity. I would remind you that in the streetcar, uh, the mobility plan for streetcar, it, it contemplates uh, affordable housing in that plan as well. Yeah. But I'm talking about community housing bonds, uh, and specifically that could help address the 30,000 unit uh, shortage I know we have over the next five years. Uh, yeah, assuming those are legal and everybody agrees, I think we do have capacity, yes. Okay, thank you. I don't see any further questions about this item. Next item, please. Item 42, an ordinance to provide that the City of Omaha be authorized to issue and sell general obligation bonds in an amount not to exceed 146 million for public facility projects. Public hearing on number 42 is today. Proponents, please. Good afternoon, Council. Deborah Ward, the Omaha Convention and Visitors Bureau, 120 South 31st Avenue, here to answer any questions. Thank you. Other proponents? Seeing none, any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Mr. Curtis, this may be a question for you or others in the audience. Um, this particular item, 146 million in public facilities, does include some new projects not previously included in capital improvement plans, but I think they are, and the new one just presented to us today. Um, if you would just take a second to identify those projects and where you think that those year, that the years those projects are intended in the context of the CIP plan or these bonds 2025 to 2028, I think those new projects being the downtown police precinct the proposed gun range, and then also the convention center expansion. Yeah, I would think in each of those cases, it would be contemplated that uh, by 2025, uh, pro uh, work would begin on those, all three of those projects. Thank you. And you know, you have completion times on those, or what's identified in the capital improvement plan we just received? Uh, you know, I haven't seen, I know in the gun range they're still doing some design work, so I don't know that we've seen a completion date on that. Uh, downtown Precinct we'd love to see in place by the end of 26. I'm not sure that's really uh, reasonable, though, given the time where we are. And I think in the case of uh, the Cabrina Convention Center, I believe they're shooting for 2028. Okay. 27, I'm beginning to think, based on looking at Roger. We do have MECA representatives here, if you wouldn't mind, Roger. Do you want to speak to that? Roger Dixon, 455 North 10th Street. Um, the project, if approved and moves forward, will start construction by the end of this year, first of uh, next year, with a completion date of mid 27. So. Okay. And unique to this particular project in this section of the bond issues is a private uh, philanthropic matching of what might be approved by voters, right? That's correct. And it's a one-to-one -one, uh, anticipated 100 million to 100 million? That is correct. Okay. okay. Anything else you'd like to offer in terms of the project or it's it's, uh, it's, it's needed? It's good for the city, I'll just say that. It's uh, something that we've been talking about since 2017 and it's good to see it finally, hopefully gonna start. 
Uh, one other thing I'd throw in too is yes. that there's quite a bit of, of state turn back tax that will go towards this project. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Ms. Melton, you're recognized. Thanks, but don't go very far. Come on back. You'll like this. <coughs> um, our number of years ago, I, I, I did kind of a, I don't know, it was about six months. We met with Mecca. We went through the budget, the money. Um, and actually, we have a great story to tell with our convention center. Um, we actually don't go in the hole every year like other cities. The majority, I didn't know this in, in, until then, but most cities lose money on their concert and convention centers. We're one of the few cities that actually we either break even or we've got revenue. We have uh, revenue. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Because it's something that, number one, we should be very proud of. Um, number two, I want to thank you for being so fiscally responsible. But most people don't know that cities will go into debt to fund their convention centers, even if they go into the negative, because it still brings money in for the city. You get heads on beds in the hotels. You get you spend money in the restaurants. And so most cities say, hey, even if we lose money on this, we're still going to put money into it because in the end, we make money. Omaha, we, we make money both ways. So, And that's how it was set up. The monies that, we, you know, we... A lot of cities go out and they build their convention centers as loss leaders. Mm -hmm. And they basically give those facilities away to the users that come in. There's some rationale of what they charge them, but most of the time it's it's not amount. It's about the heads in beds or butts in seats, excuse my language. But Omaha approached it differently. And I wasn't here when that was set up. That was done by Mecca and the then city administration. And it's worked. I mean, we we make money at the convention center. We make money in the in the arena. But that's the money we make goes back into the facility, and we have people that come in through with Deb Ward and her staff. I mean, we've really caught up on what we had always hoped to be is a, a convention city. We are. Most people don't realize it. They don't see. Uh, you know, Luke Bryan's here or Pink or somebody else. They know that. It's when we get the association of lottery dealers in like going on now. No one sees that, but we've got a thousand people roaming in our convention center and they're staying in our hotels. That's what the convention center is all about. We have needs of more space and that's why we're here today to hopefully this bond will pass. And so since CHI uh, was built, um, we bonded it. We did this very similar thing that we're doing right now. There were no, there was no property, or there was no tax increase, property tax increase to do it. And um, Steve, you can jump in, but every year we were able to pay the bonds back with the revenues that were generated from the convention center. Isn't that correct? Uh, by and large, we did have state sales turn back. That helped. <clears throat> and I think that did contemplate some city service, some city debt service uh, back in the original setup. Our, our debt service is about $19 million a year, and it will retire in about two years. Uh, but we pay for that. We don't pay for that. I mean, but it's not coming out of our general fund. It's it's coming from the revenues from the convention. No, and that's and no, it's true. And to your point, we've never had right. to subsidize Mecca either. Well, that, some, that was actually, kind of the originally, you did at the very beginning, and it's all been paid back, and we didn't know. And we, because we started doing so well financially, we gave our subvention up early. Well, and I think that that's just a very, very important story to tell, um, because people say this is taxpayer funded. It's taxpayer funded. I think the bonds are taxpayer backed, but they're gonna they'll be paid for with the revenue and we're not really taking a chance in my opinion because Roger I I think you and Mecca have proven your success and demonstrated um, that you can pay the bonds back and so that's what gives me it we're, we're not taking a chance and you know hope hope that that'll happen because we have a you have a 20 year track record in doing it and it's working with the community 
that supports our facilities and the, with Visit Omaha that, and just people buying tickets. You know, I was told when I came here 25 years ago that Omaha's not a good concert market. We proved them wrong. And that we'd never be a convention destination. Proved them wrong too. So it just keeps growing. No, thank, thank you, Roger. Thank you for for all you do. And I'm I'm looking forward to this because the, the, I mean this is how the city makes revenue. And when everybody wants to talk about reducing property taxes and everything else, grow your tax base. So this is one way that Omaha can grow their tax base by collecting sales tax. And by the way, collecting sales tax from people from who are coming in from other states. That's even better. Um, I mean, this is how we want to grow our tax base, and this is how we can re also reduce our property tax levy, like what it looks like we're going to do once again in 25. Eighty-five percent of the people that come in on conventions are from outside the state of uh, Nebraska. So it is people coming in, bringing in their their cash and spending it in our businesses. So, Thank you. Thank you, Roger. And that's it. I'm going to follow up on that with uh, Deborah Ward, if you don't mind. Okay, well, you're you're the stats person. There you go. Tell us a little bit. Um, it was very enjoyable serving um, on the Omaha Convention and Visitors Bureau Committee with you. Although we served during COVID, that mm -hmm. wasn't fun. But it was fun watching Omaha come out of it. Right. Exactly. Because, again, you have a great story to tell. Could you give us um, some information about the conventions, who comes mm -hmm. to town, and how much money we bring in? Um, for the conventions now, and then what you would anticipate in the future based upon the, this addition. Well, you know, they just had the Deborah Ward Omaha Convention of Visitors for 120 South 31st Avenue. Um, they just had their 20th anniversary last year, and so we did look at all of the stats. And when we looked back, it's 80. It averages out to be 80 million dollars worth of convention business a year. So over the 20 years, what's that? 1.6 billion dollars. Uh, worth of business that comes into our community. That's not what they make. It's what our community makes, um, bringing a convention to town. Um, so when we take a look at the expansion of the convention center, you know, the majority of the cities uh, we compete with um, for convention business offer more con total convention space and more meeting room space. In fact, we rank um, 16th in total space. With the uh, planned expansion, we move up to 12. Um, we rank dead last in the number of meeting rooms uh, at 16. When they add the 25, we'll have 41 meeting rooms and we'll rank 11th. Understand that in our competitive set, there's 20 cities. The majority above us with the expansion are much larger metropolitan cities with much larger uh, hotel inventory and all of that. So this expansion will help us be more competitive. Um, in 2023, our sales team goes out and they uh, hunt for convention and event business. And we secured in 2023 46.8 million dollars in convention business for future years. That includes the convention center. Again, that's not 43 million going to the convention center. That's 43 million for our community. 46 million for our community. We lost 73.8 million dollars for two specific reasons. The convention center was not available or there was limited space. There, there were space limitations. We brought the convention planners in, there wasn't enough space. So if we expand, uh, we won't lose that much business. And we, it's, it's hard to, to leave $73 million worth of business on the table. Does that answer your question? Yeah, I, okay. I just wanted, I wanted to highlight really what we're getting. Not only are we getting matching dollars from, from philanthropy, mm -hmm. but I knew you had the stats on how much money does our convention uh, center bring in. They, it brings in enough, obviously, to pay the bonds, so mm -hmm. we don't have to worry about it going on the backs of the taxpayers. But then how it helps the rest of the business community, right. and that's it, what you said. You know, the, the hotels, the restaurants, the attractions, you know, the city receives hotel occupation tax, um, the state receives hotel lodging tax, there's the sales tax, there's the restaurant tax. Um, we estimate about 30% of the real restaurant tax is paid by visitors. Okay, and if people are driving in, they're gonna pay? They're gonna be at the gas stations. They're gas stations, the gas or they're gonna fly right. in and they're gonna help pay for the new airport. Exactly. Um, and so we're, but it also, I think the creation of jobs. Um, when you expand that, 
you're going to probably expand the need for another, hopefully another hotel mm -hmm. downtown, That's what additional mm -hmm. restaurants, um, additional staff at, at CHI. So in addition, we're also increasing the job growth. Yeah, there's at least 17,000 you know, friends, family, and neighbors who work in the tourism industry right now. You increase that, you increase the number of jobs. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I, I appreciate you highlighting that. Absolutely. Point. Thank you. I have nothing further. Thank you. No further lights. Next item. Item 43, an ordinance to provide that the City of Omaha be authorized to issue and sell general obligation bonds in an amount not to exceed $10 million for parks and recreation projects. Public hearing on number 43 is today. Proponents, please. Seeing none, any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Item 44, an ordinance to provide that the City of Omaha be authorized to issue and sell general obligation bonds in an amount not to exceed $72 million for street preservation projects. Public hearing on number 44 is today. Proponents, please. City Council of Omaha, Nebraska, Donny R. Johnson, the Johnson Equestrian Foundation. You know, uh, I looked at these bond things, and I, I think that you guys are way, what we call, um, underbid. The unit count would like to keep costs down, but you haven't put the electrical car system in there. December 31st, 2032, that's only seven years, and the last piece of legislation Obama signed when he was in office to put electrical outlets for cars all down the interstate. And you guys haven't put that in your budget right here. And that's only seven, unless you're gonna come back to the table, but we would prefer you not to come back to the table to fight this issue. We prefer you to come back to the table and try to help us get this medical marijuana passed. All right, Donnie, that's off topic. Any other proponents to number 44? Seeing none, any opponents? Public hearings closed. Mr. Curtis or Mr. Stubbe, I might ask you just a few follow-up questions on this one. Um, this one proposes $72 million into the street preservation bond program for street renovation. And in 2020, uh, voters did approve an enhanced program of work uh, around our streets um, that uh, plans to do $40 million of additional work um, over five years into our streets. So my first, my first question is, um, has that in fact occurred, or where, where in that initial bond issue are we in terms of status? Uh, this is Steve Curtis, uh, City Finance. We did spend, except for the very first year in 2020, where we spent about 38, 30, I'm sorry, 33 million maybe, 38 million. Uh, we were, uh, let me, we were eight million short, and that's the reason why now that we're catching up, we do about 40 million a year. This is a couple more years worth. And it didn't need that last eight million, but we've been on track to spend that on average each year, forty million. Okay, yeah, and walk me through that math a little bit, um, because what's being proposed here is seventy-two million that presumably continues that enhanced amount of work, right? But that's over four years. So how how does that? Can you flesh that out a little bit? Yeah. So each of these authorizations are truing up the authorizations that were done in twenty twenty two that you alluded to before. And so we made sure that we had enough authorization to go out four years from now. So what it tells you is we had about two years worth of authorization left in street preservation bonds, only needed about two more to get out four years, to go back to our, our more normal four-year cycle. Okay. Does that mean, however, we did not fully expend an, an additional 40 million in that first four years? No, all it means is that we, the only thing that would be missing here would be the eight million uh, that wasn't expended in 2020 that's carried forward. Okay, I, I find that a little confusing when we talk about 72 million uh, for the next 25 to 28. Are you able to, maybe we can follow up with you before the next. Well, well sure, maybe you can think about this. We did 200 million in 2020, and then we trued it up a little bit in 2022, we're truing up again now. Okay, I wouldn't mind following up with you before next week on this particular item, just to make sure I understand exactly where that money was spent and what the 72 million will do with the idea that I want to uh, continue to support that program of work and make sure we're, we're doing what we indicated we would do uh, to fix our streets, which you know we all, I think, agree are uh, a, a high priority. Well, and if you think about it, if we had 200 million starting in 2020, assuming we'd spent all 40 million, 
that would have gotten you through 24. Uh, in 2022, we picked up two more years, so that would have been 25 and 26. This is two more years, it would be 27 and 28. And that would get you to 40 million a year. Okay. Um, we'll follow up you before next before next week. I think I see where you're going, but I just want to make sure I understand that before we vote on this next week sure. and, uh, and have those totals in front of us. And I think voters will ask those questions too. I don't see any further lights on this one. Next item. Item 45, an ordinance to provide that the City of Omaha be authorized to issue and sell general obligation bonds in an amount not to exceed $10 million for public safety vehicles. Public hearing on number 45 is today. Proponents, please. Seeing none, any opponents? Uh, Donnie R. Johnson, the Johnson Equestrian Foundation, and North Omaha Concerned, uh, Concerned Citizen Foundation, 4928 North 52nd Street. I still think your bid is too low. I mean, your general bond, obligation bond. I told the Postal Service several years back, we're moving to fossil, away from fossil fuel. Now they got to replace all those Jeeps because all these new electrical vehicles taking over. So you need to tell these folks, look, we need some uh, money set aside for looking into this electrical system of cars. They say they're going to do it. I don't know if they are or not, but Elon Musk say they're going to get it done. So you don't have a police car that can't get no gas, or like the gas or the postal service. I told them, look here, fella. Get rid of them little Jeeps and get you some electrical cars and save some money. They, they finally figured out a day late and a dollar short, I think. Okay. Thank you. Any other opponents to number 45? Seeing none, public hearings closed. Next item. Item 46, an ordinance to provide that the City of Omaha be authorized to issue and sell general obligation bonds in an amount not to exceed $14.5 million for environmental sewer projects is Amendment of the Whole re recommended by the Public Works Department. Public hearing on number 46 is today. Proponents, please. Seeing none, any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Non-action items, items 47 through 67, do not require public hearing or city council consideration at this meeting, but will be placed on a future agenda for public hearing and or vote. The reason for non-action is noted after the item on the agenda, as well as the date the item is expected to appear on agenda for consideration. Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Motion and a second. Roll call. Hug. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Melton. Yes. Rowe. Yes. Begley. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed 6 to 0. Meeting is adjourned at 323.